What's going on good people? In this video, I will be walking you through how I went about doing a lock install. Uh, this lock actually has a keypad built into it and uh, just wanted to show you how I did it. I upgraded essentially from a dumb lock to a smart lock. Here we go. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time checking out this channel, uh, please note that I do create videos on Tuesdays and Saturdays each week. So come back and come back often. So this video, I'm going to, like I mentioned in the opener, I'm going to cover the smart lock or the keypad lock install that I did. Uh, this is the lock on the door to the garage. Um, it's original. I, it was here when I got the house. Uh, this lock does not have a key, even though it does have a keyhole in it. The key that I was given does not work on this door. So I literally leave this door between the house and the garage unlocked. And while it's not a concern because I do keep the garage door closed, uh, I still want to have that extra layer of protection so that I'm able to come in and, uh, you know, lock the door. And if I go out of the garage, I can still lock the door and get back in and out. Um, the reason why I wanted a uh, lock that does not require a key is because, you know, in modern vehicles, you have vehicles that have uh, keyless ignition and I have one of those vehicles and so for that reason I wanted to be able to get out of the car and not have to pull out my keys just to go into the house from the garage I wanted to be able to just punch in the code or you know use some kind of other method to be able to get in so this is the original lock it is a quick set lock um, who knows how old it is it was here when I got the house and so Going on, so this is the lock from the inside. As you see, it has clearly seen better days given the number of scratches and dings that are on it. Um, I took the lock off of the door and uh, it had this graphite. I'm assuming this is graphite and not dirt, uh, but it had a lot of graphite in it. Um, I'm not sure why it would have that much in it. Uh, in, in case if you're wondering why would somebody use graphite, uh, graphite is a known lubricant for doorknobs and other things. Um, the graphite is often used in door locks uh, instead of like WD-40 or uh, like a lithium grease or something else of that nature because of the fact it's able to last longer and it is not affected by temperatures so um, normally when you put like WD-40 or something of that nature on a lock and the temperature drops, let's say to 50 or 40 or even below freezing, that lock becomes a little bit more difficult to, uh, you know, utilize because that oil has thickened up due to the lower temperatures. So graphite is used in that scenario. All right, so here's the door lock with the doorknob removed. As you see, that residue from that all that extra graphite is still down here in the bottom of the opening. Um, the only remaining part here is the latch, and that came right on out. Just remove the screws. All right, so here is the replacement lock. It is a quick set smart code 917. You can get this at your big box store like I did. Uh, I got it from one of the home improvement stores. I'm not going to call them by name because they're not a sponsor of this video. Uh, so no credit for you guys. Uh, but as you see, key, you have the option of still using the key, but you also have the option of using the keypad, um, security grade, top level security grade, and you can put in up to 30 user codes, which to be honest is a lot of codes. Uh, it also, this particular lock uses that quick set smart key system, so you can rekey it without having to call a locksmith out to do so. You just put the uh, old key in, use that special key to do the rekeying thing, put your new key in, turn it back, and you are good to go. All right, so here is everything that is in the box. So you have the back side of the lock, you have the front side of the lock, you have the... Uh, 
I believe this is the enters and a couple other things up here. All right, and then of course we have instructions and uh, I know how to put a lot together, but uh, I did have to make some, I had, did have to read the instructions for a couple of the steps uh, because of the fact this is a smart lock and um, it actually has some intelligence in it. So you actually have to put in batteries and plug in the wires and run the wires a certain way and stuff like that nature. So I actually kind of did have to read the instructions for this, not the entire instructions, but I did have to read them nonetheless. I did not have to cut a hole in the door because obviously there's already a hole in the door and the uh, latch already had a notch out for it. So I didn't have to do that part. All right, so here is the lock face. So this is the exterior portion of the lock. Um, I will note that if I recall correctly, this lock is not recommended for uh, heavy use in wet locations. So for instance, if you had this door, let's say on, I mean, excuse me, if you had this lock on let's say an exterior door and that exterior door did not have a porch, then you would probably have some problems when there were downpours or whatnot, because again, this is a smart lock and it does have electronics in it. And those electronics are not uh, sealed up, waterproofed or anything of that nature. So uh, be mindful. Ideally, if you do put this on an exterior door that it goes behind a screen door or something else that has another level of protection from the precipitation or weather elements. Um, so you have your standard number keypad one through zero with the quick set button and your lock that's already built into this particular plate. This is the doorknob and the doorknobs are uh, interchangeable. When you look at them, they're only designed in one way. But what the particular instructions say is if you need, uh, I believe this lock is designed for a right hand door. I could be wrong on that statement. Uh, but what the instructions say, if you need to have this lock on a door that's of the opposite side, that you flip the handle the other way around and it will slide on and work as it should. So that's what I did, had to do in my particular scenario. And so again, uh, you just flip it around, there you go. All right, next. So the wire that I mentioned, uh, it comes through the front plate um, and the wire connects over to the back side. And in the instructions, it specifically says to run the wire down and under instead of over, uh, over the latch set here. Um, and that's, I'm assuming there's a reasoning behind it. I think because more so because the uh, latch set is set up for it to ran, run over or run under. Under, sorry, not over. Um, so that's what I did here. Uh, this particular screw, you're probably asking, where is that screw coming from? This particular screw is coming from the latch set. This is a uh, longer screw than what comes with the latch set. If you've seen the other door video where I did the door install, uh, you'll hear me talk about why I use longer screws in the latch set. And the main reason is it makes it harder for that door to be kicked in. No door is really kick proof or, uh, you know, if somebody really is determined to get in, they will get in. Um, but putting longer screws in makes that door a little bit more resistant. So I use that longer screw. As you see, it's kind of a bit, a little bit too long, but I did use a longer screw on the latch. All right, and here's another angle of that in place. All right, this is the backside or the interior portion of the lock. And so uh, you connect that wire that comes from the keypad side of the lock, which is on the exterior, over to the back side, and it has a port where it plugs in. And then you slide it over the, um, I guess, latch mechanism. I'm not sure what the official name of that is. And then once you get it on, you tighten the screws here. These screws go and connect to the front plate, and that's what holds the lock on the door. And as you see here, there is a wire that runs up here. This is for a nine volt battery. I believe it's estimated that this battery will last for up to three years, but I could be wrong on that statement. Um, also, the doorknob portion or the, the key part or the doorknob portion is already mounted on this housing, so you don't have to assemble that. You just literally screw the screw here and the screw there, and you're good to go. 
All right, to get the doorknob on, you slide it over in the appropriate direction. And then there is a set screw that goes in underneath. Um, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you have a door, the door is designed to work, one, the lock, excuse me, the lock is designed to work with, I believe a right-handed door uh, or left-handed door. I believe it's left-handed door, but if you have a right-handed door, you just swap the knobs around. Um, yeah, you swap the knobs around and flip them over. And that way you get the set screw on the bottom as well as the handle turn turning in the appropriate direction and so there's that the lock did come with a battery as you see it's not a major name battery but it did come with a battery so you don't have to buy that and all you gotta do is unwrap it and plug it in and it fits in there a certain way so that it can be concealed properly and then the last part is to throw the cover on it and there you have the final portion of the door now it does the instructions do have uh, how to go about programming the lock for your particular codes as i mentioned earlier it does allow for 30 codes uh, there's a certain set of sequences that you have to do to change some of the functionality on it uh, there's a program button on the inside of the door and if we go back here uh, so if you look here so right here is the program button. And depending on the operation that you're attempting to do, you press this button first, and then there's a number on the front side of the lock that corresponds to the action that you're trying to uh, take with the lock. And from there, you change whatever setting that you're trying to change. Uh, so one of those settings that I did tinker with, obviously, was putting in codes. Uh, you can put in up to 30 codes and uh, once you program the codes, like you don't have to type, um, you know, anything in particular, like you can just walk up to the door and start punching numbers. And once you hit the right, if you match, if you press the numbers that match the combination that is already stored in the lock, then the door will unlock. Another setting that I tinkered with was how long does the door stay unlocked until it locks back? Um, and so by default, I believe that is a five second unlock and then lock back. Um, I did tinker with it to get it to 30 seconds. Um, so you have the ability to change it. Uh, this latch is the locking mechanism on the door. Uh, so you can always open the door from the inside. Um, that was somewhat of a concern, but uh, not a major concern. Um, so uh, if you're looking like if you have kids that have a tendency to run outside of the house, this probably is not the lock that you want to purchase because from the inside of the house, that doorknob will always open the door. Um, from the outside though, that latch will determine whether the outside is always open or not. In this position, that the door is always locked until the code is put in. And then from that point, the door will remain unlocked until they designate it time delay the unlock time delay has passed and then it will lock back. Uh, if you flip this to the horizontal position, that means both the exterior portions and the interior portions of the door are always unlocked. And even if you try to put a code in on the door while the door is unlocked, it won't respond to it. Well, the buttons will react to you pressing them, but there is no activity like you can't lock the door from the outside by using the buttons on the keypad. You actually have to open the door, flip the latch, close the door back. Um, so that's kind of something that is, uh, in my experience, is a little bit different uh, because from my experience, a lot of times when you unlock the door, uh, sometimes it will lock back, but depending on that setting, you can actually have it where you can lock the door from the outside if the door is already unlocked. This one does not have that. Um, thus far, I've had it installed for probably about three to four months. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I did have to, I, I did uh, kind of make a mistake in doing some of the programming. So I went ahead and did a factory reset. Uh, that's not that difficult to do. You have to hold the program button down and for a specified duration and it'll reset. All of that stuff stuff is in the instruction manual on how to go about doing the reset. So I am satisfied with this lock. Um, I have used the 
mechanical key in here to open the door. Uh, I will also point out that I did rekey this lock using that quick set smart, smart rekey system. Um, if you're not familiar with it, basically you take the old key, you put it in a door, you turn it, then you put the other, uh, they have this like pin that goes in this hole here, this hole next to the, the actual keyhole. So you put this in while the key is turned, then you pull it out and then you put your new key in, remove your pin, turn the lock back and your new key has thus been programmed for or set for the new door. Um, so that will wrap things up for this video. If you have any questions, drop a comment down in the comment below. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, drop those down in the comment section below. Uh, if you're new to this channel and this is the first time watching the videos that I have on this channel, please be sure to consider to subscribe to the channel. New videos every week on Tuesday and Saturday. Um, also, please give this video a thumbs up that lets me know that you're interested in this content that lets YouTube know that other people are interested in this content. Until next time, peace out.